Okay, new idea today. Let's try something a bit different. Uh, today I'll watch some laps around the track and I'll talk about things to keep in mind when just driving around the track, how to navigate the track better and also set up ideas for certain sections of the track. So if you have a problem here, what to change. If you like this video then the only way I, I can really know is if the views are good, if you share the video, if you comment below, if you like, you know, I'll read the comments and see if this type of video is what you want to see and if you do, I'll make more of them and if not, I guess I'll think of something else. Okay, so for the first video, let's just go to my home track video. You've probably seen it before if you've been watching this channel, but let's let's watch it and go over a few ideas there. I'm going to remove myself and let's just watch a few laps first. Okay, that's enough of that. So let's go and watch a lap there and talk about just driving first. Because I think that a lot of people, they go to the track and they drive and then they immediately want to change the car without even considering what they are doing themselves, how they are driving the car. So let's talk about that first. So the front straight, Every, everyone can do the front straight. This is the easiest part of the track. What you would like to consider here is to position yourself on the straight for the next corner. So in this case, you drive close to the pit lane so that you have open up the corner at the end of the straight. And the end of the straight is actually a sort of tricky part for most people. The reason I go closer to the middle here instead of staying out wide is that there was a bump here. So I sort of avoid this bump, so I go a bit closer to the middle of the track. And then here is where the problems start for many people. A lot of people brake too hard and too late at the end of the straight. They get excited because they're going fast, and then they forget that, hey, I need to turn at the end of the straight. What you want to do is you want to have a nice round corner. Car remains balanced throughout. And the only way to do that really is to not upset the car by braking too hard. Because when you brake, all the weight goes onto the front tires. And the more load there is on a tire, the more grip it will have. So if you are driving really fast down the front straight, then you slam on the brakes, the weight will go onto, onto the front wheels. And with the front tires having more load on them, they will grip more. So the car will turn more. If the track is bumpy, this will be a very difficult uh, situation for you as a driver to turn at high speed in bumps. If the car is very slippery, or if the car, if the track is very slippery, it's also difficult because maybe you would lose the rear end in this situation. So how do you 
navigate this corner, I think that the best way is to first sort of don't break at all. So let off the throttle and coast for a bit and turn into the corner. And as you enter the corner, get back on the throttle. Because when, when you go through these corners with some throttle on, the car won't flip over as easily and won't get unstable as easily. So just practice that first, not braking at all, just letting off the throttle at some point, coasting to lower your speed and then getting on the throttle again so that you have a bit of throttle on going through the corner itself. And then what the fast, really fast guys do is they are actually able to keep the throttle on a bit longer than you did when you were coasting and then they brake while still going in a straight line and then they coast for maybe a moment or maybe not even at all where they brake and then they get a bit on the gas again. They brake to lower the speed, then they get on the gas again to maintain a balanced handling through the corner. So after practicing just letting off the throttle, coasting to lower the speed and then maintaining a steady throttle through the corner, then try keeping the throttle on the straight for longer, braking a bit and then doing the same thing with a steady throttle around the corner. This is one situation where a good driver can gain some time because instead of just coasting, they actually brake and then get back on throttle. But it's hard to do. What most um, sort of less skilled drivers do is either they let off early and coast and sort of lose time because of that, but the car is stable at all times and they keep a good line around the corner or they brake too heavily too late and unsettle the car just as, as they're trying to get in the corner and, and they blow the corner. So there's more to it. It's just the front straight and one corner, but the great drivers, they can gain fractions of a second just in doing that section right. Okay, then on this track we have a jump here. So it's even more important that, that you get this corner right. And not only that, you then have to have the correct speed here and line so that you clear this double jump and you can land in the right place so that you can do this next corner, which is a really tricky one. So the problem with this next corner is because cars are landing here, they uh, break the track surface on the landing and create dust in this corner. So this corner is always loose. There's always dust here. So cars tend to want to push here. So it's hard to get the car turned. So really the best thing is to try to get the car turned a bit. So the momentum of the car, the motion of the car is already rotating it. So you land and the car naturally just wants to keep rotating around this. That's what Mayfield would do here. Let's put it that way. He would pitch the car so that he lands and does and the car is already wanting to rotate around this. Now the way you do that is you just turn the car even more than needed here on the face of the jump. But it's, it's really hard to do, especially to do correct air lap after lap after lap. Okay, so let's continue. So this corner, like I said, the cars tend to want to push. So you really need to slow down for this, especially if you didn't succeed in sort of turning the car a bit more and having a, that rotating motion in it as it lands here. Uh, so important to go slow to go fast in this section. Try and land it, brake if you still uh, need to, and try and keep a tight line around this corner. Another reason to keep a tight line around this corner is next we are heading back towards the driver's stand through this chicane. So if you go wide here, it's not going to be good because then this next corner is too tight. So you, this is a slow corner, slow dusty corner. So do this right, stay tight to the pipe, and then you, you'll be faster through this next chicane. Here it's just line choice, trying to keep a steady throttle uh, close to the apex of this corner and into the next jump. 
and it's a bit tricky here because it was a bit bumpy so not only are you trying to stay close to the pipe doing the chicane you also have to be aware of the bumps here and the bumps can affect your speed going into the double so you need to be aware of that maybe at the last moment you need to add some throttle quickly to be able to clear the jump if you hit the bump badly or something like that so it was a tricky section here again you can see all these ruts here you don't want to deal with those so you try to jump the double to the inside here and this is a deceiving section where because it's a bit off camber and because you're carrying speed from this jump it's very easy to go too fast so this is another section where you need to tell yourself slow is fast so just a bit of throttle to keep the car balanced and stable and try to stay close to the pipe here it's very easy to give too much throttle and end up way wide over here. Another tricky section because as you can see here where I paused it, it you don't really see the whole car when you are close to the inside. So you just have to know that the right line here is one where you can barely see the wheels of the car. So you think you're going to hit the pipe, but you aren't actually. There's still space here between the car and the pipe. And the reason you want to stay really close here is you can carry a lot more speed down this hill. You can sort of even jump a bit down this hill. And then as the car gets loaded again down here, you start turning into this corner. So the closer to this pipe you, you are, the straighter the line to this next corner again. So a lot of drivers would maybe go a bit wide here as I explained earlier then they drive up here and then turn down here and when they do that then not only is this corner tighter and lower speed because of that but also as they head down the hill they are making this corner at the bottom of the hill tighter also and that's actually a really bad thing for your lap time on this track because what follows this is a quite steep uphill it doesn't look it on the video but this section is quite steep so you want to carry your corner speed through this which will make you a lot faster up this hill and onto the next section if you lose all your speed here you lose a lot of time in this next section so let's watch that so close to the pipe and try and maintain my speed in that left hander That was a decent job and also you can see here that there's a bump here a sharp bump so i try to go between the pipe and that bump so right there you see my car is heading between the pipe and this bump so even though my goal is to maintain corner speed my number one goal is to maintain the corner speed while still hitting that really tight line because i know i lose more if i hit that bump so let's go back and watch that section again. I just barely made it. Then this is also a tricky section because there, if you go wide here, there's often bumps because that's where most people go. So you want to sort of turn tighter up here than would maybe be the optimal line if this was an on-road track i don't think people would turn that tight they would go wider here to, to the fence so they can carry speed but here we don't want to do that because of bumps so we turn a bit tighter up here than normal stay close to the pipe and try and stay close to the pipe all the way through this round corner so if we watch again you can see up here on the corner i'm turning almost it seems unnecessarily tight but there's a reason for that and that's I know that there are bumps out there I want to avoid so there you saw I, I kind of hesitated I didn't do it clean but you get the idea I want to stay on the inside and through there I sort of halfway through the corner at, at the tightest point I need to let off the throttle a bit so I'm I'm working this corner 
with both st both steering and throttle. So if I just kept the throttle on the same this whole time, because I'm accelerating here, I wanted to go as fast as possible. This tightest section, it the car just wouldn't go around it. So I need to let off sort of in this area, maybe not even completely, just sort of release the throttle a bit, make sure that the car is tracking right, turns around this, and then I get on the throttle again. But I don't punch it again. I sort of, I roll on the throttle because I want to keep the balance of the car. I don't want to upset the car by sort of suddenly letting off or braking or getting on the gas hard. I want to uh, allow the car to roll into the corner and then sort of maintain a good balance through the whole corner. I let off so that the car turns a bit tighter in this tight section and then I roll on the throttle again and accelerate out. But I try and do it all in a smooth motion. And this this was a decent uh, example of that. So let's just watch that corner. So I let off a bit, it turns more and then I get on again. But it, it looks like one smooth motion. And then this is one of the tightest corners on the track and also you are approaching this with a lot of speed because you accelerated here and then you need to slow down again for this corner but you don't necessarily even need to brake here so here you can see i'm approaching the corner and i'm full lock and this already slows the car down when you're full lock like this so what i do here is almost like a bit of a scandinavian flick so a Scandinavian flick is when you turn the opposite way of where you want to go and then you t turn back. So what that does is in this situation you turn a bit left and then right. So because of that when you turn the car left first, uh, the car rolls to the right and then when you quickly flick it back, the roll to the left is more violent and you can encourage the rear end to break loose a bit and that will help the car rotate around the corner and not only that but um, when I'm turning left for longer than you think is necessary in this long left hander I'm also opening up that hip in a bit to where it's not so tight so if you watch here you can see uh, you can see that moment So it's very slight here, but you can just tell that in this moment here, I could be just going straight for the apex, but I'm sort of heading this way, right? So I, I turned left a bit too long and then I flicked the car to the right. So watch again what happens here. Did you see that? So because I did that, not only did I open up this hairpin so it's a bit wider, but also, like I was explaining with the load transfer of the car, it first transfers to the right and then you flick it to the left. So there's, there's a larger amount of load transfer that happens quickly. And that helps the car rotate around this tight corner. And also another thing that I do here is when I, when I can see that the car uh, start sliding right here uh, before the apex I get on the throttle also because getting on the throttle will drift the car and then when I want to go straight the way the car is set up uh, the throttle actually helps the car to lock in and accelerate straight so here I'm already hard on the throttle here I'm getting on the throttle. So I threw the car and I saw, okay, it starts to slide and then I get on the throttle. So at this point, I'm already on the throttle and I turn on throttle and accelerate out. Time out. I just remembered something that's relevant here. And even Bruno Coelho said the same thing. For me, it is much more difficult uh, to get used to it because you need to be super smooth but sometimes you need to be super aggressive, you know? And for me, it's kind of difficult to, to realize when you need to be aggressive and when you need to be smooth, you know? So even some of the world's best drivers have 
to think about this at least. And that is that we tend to drive according to our preference, our driving style. And sometimes on a track, there's a section that would require us to do something different. So we have to recognize that, okay, so my car feels good everywhere and I can drive my normal style. But then in this one section, I need to do something out of the ordinary. So maybe you like to turn the wheel quite slowly, for example, the steering. And uh, then you feel that in this one corner, my car pushes. Well, maybe a solution to that. I know this is going to sound ridiculous when I say it, but trust me, it's not something that most of us probably do naturally. Maybe the solution is just to turn the wheel faster. I know it's ridiculous, but I, I do the same mistake. So I drive in one way. I drive according to my style. Then I'm like, in this corner, my car pushes. Well, why not just attack that corner more? Why not just really throw it in? Why not just turn the steering wheel aggressively? This is one of those sections where if you just <clears throat> drive according to your normal style and it's sort of to be smooth, well, maybe just don't be smooth in this section and you don't need to adjust the car. You just turn the steering more aggressively and the car turned around the corner. So you also need to read the track and what the requirements are and maybe break out of your normal driving style or way of using your transmitter, way of turning the wheel, way of braking, way of using throttle. Be smoother in some section, be more aggressive in another section if the track requires that. Back to the video. Okay, this jump, the key point with this jump really is to line up for the next section. So again, it's a bit of a chicane. So you want to jump and land in the exact right spot. So you have a straight line to the next corner. That was a really good example of that because I couldn't really have been any closer to this pipe. And again, you want to be close to this pipe because it opens up this next corner. So you land straight line here. And I actually, this is typical for me. I didn't brake early enough. So here you definitely need to brake. You're heading so fast into a slow corner. So you brake here and you really, I would want to be here, but I'm over here. See, this is the difference. If this was David Ronnefalk, he would be here every time. But I blew it. I had such a great line here that I then didn't compensate for that and notice like, hey, I'm on the right line heading really fast. I need to break a bit earlier. So I, I should have turned in a bit more here and break, uh, got on the break sooner so that I could be here instead of out here. But if you're driving alone, this isn't that big of an issue for your lap time, actually, because if someone's behind you, maybe it's a problem, you know, because they dive in here. Maybe they end up hitting you if you close the door or maybe they get by you. But if you're alone, maybe you can still save this situation because you can carry more speed. So you don't necessarily lose so much because if you go tight here, you have to go slower. But if you get, if you notice you're wide here, you stay on the gas harder and power on to the next section. Okay, the next section, you can see these, there are some bumps here you want to avoid. So again, you stay tight here, but it's actually good for the next section. So let's watch that. Uh, staying wide here opens up this corner and you also need some speed for this jump. It's quite close to the corner and it's a long double. So you do need to open this up a bit and maintain your corner speed so you clear this double. You do that double. And then this is a really tricky section that I think maybe the hardest section on the track. So it's really fast and really rough and the bumps are where you break. So this part of the track to do it really fast, you need to have good braking technique. Everywhere else, you can kind of get away with just full brake. That's what most people do. So if they brake, they brake 100%. They don't have any sort of 
25% braking or 50% braking or 75% or rolling on the brake slowly. It's typically, I need to brake, boom, 100%. This section, you can't do that if you want to be really fast. You cannot brake at all and be okay through here, but you won't be super fast. If you brake 100%, you can do it, but it will be risky. Or if it's not risky, uh, if you play it safe, but you break 100%, you will be slower because you have to break so much earlier. So the trick here is to basically stay on throttle until this point where I am here and then sort of barely touch the brakes you are smoothly applying the brakes just to lower your speed a bit. And then you then then it's sort of a you have to read the car after that. You coast for a bit and you're on the throttle a bit. It's always best if you can be on throttle, but you need to read your speed also. So after you sort of gradually increase braking force to a, still a low amount, you're just barely braking here. And it's only a very short brief moment also. This all happens very quickly when you get it right. After that, you, you read the car and see where, what's happening. But a small amount of throttle will help it navigate this section. But you want to stay really close to the pipe here. That's the smoothest uh, part. And then you get to the drop down. So it, it really does just look like a sort of uh, smooth motion, like nothing's going on. But if you want to be really fast, you want to stay on throttle as late as possible. And you will be carrying too much speed. So you have to just barely get on the brakes here to lower that speed a bit. But not too much because then you'll upset the car and you'll, the load will be on the front wheels going into these bumps, an unstable situation. So either you hit a bump, flip over or lose the rear end mid corner or something like oversteer a bit into the pipe. So it's a very tricky section to get right because of that. And when you do get it right and you notice the car is stable and balanced and you're on the inside, then this drop down is pretty straightforward to do. Just sort of drop down, um, steer the car to stay close to the pipe and then get on the throttle here. So you're sort of always ready with the throttle here to fix or control the attitude of the car if something goes wrong here. But you aren't really, you're definitely not heavily on the throttle here, if at all. So you're kind of coasting, just a bit of throttle, ready to react if you need to uh, by adding more throttle. Like if you clip the pipe here, the car's about to flip over, you just blip the throttle and turn the opposite way to sort of straighten the car out, you know. So you're just ready here. To react to whatever happens. So if we go back a bit again, just watch that section again. So the coasting, I'm ready. I went a bit wide. I ended up in that hole. I didn't really want to do that. But see, that's again, that's where Ron Falk would have been there on the inside on Mayfield. Okay, then immediately after that, we have another tricky section for braking. Here you do need to get on the brakes really hard. And this is almost more of a brake setup issue than driving because here it will be very hard to determine how much brake to use. Here you really need to just, at least for my driving skill, I need to just be able to go full brake because I have to lower the speed of the car so much. Up here in the corner, I, I don't need to lower the speeds that much so I can just use a bit of brake. But here I need to be able to go full brake. So the tricky thing is that there are bumps. So you just have to time the braking so you don't start braking at the moment you hit a bump. Because if you do, you'll flip over. You need to brake either after the car has settled after the bump or before the bump. So preferably you start braking before the bump and then uh, it, will, it will be okay throughout. So you can see here actually, you can see how I'm braking, I started braking right before the bump and even now uh, the car is doing a nose wheelie. 
but it's going to be fine. If I had started braking just a fraction of a second later, I had hit the bump and then hit the brakes as the rear is getting light, I would have flipped over. So that's why this is a tricky situation. You have to be on the brakes hard before you hit the bump because then the whole car is braking, you hit the bump, it's not such a violent reaction that Pogo sticks the rear up. If you are late on your brakes, you hit the bump, then get on the brakes, this would have become a front flip. Okay, and then uh, as you get to the corner, you let off the brakes here. Right before you drop down, you let off the brakes because now you want the car to be neutral and balanced, go, drop down into this corner and turn. That was actually a surprisingly good job for me of doing that. So let's watch that moment again. So on the brakes hard, do that corner. And then here again, the main point really is do this first double so you can line up for this next section. So this double you want to sort of cross jump into the chicane. So let's just watch that. Uh, so I'm jumping from here towards the inside. This is really off camber. You don't want to go too close. It will unsettle the car. So this is really where you want to be. And then you head into this next section. It was quite rough here. So it was a bit tricky also. I even ended up going too wide here. I should have been able to stay tighter here, which would have made this corner faster. And then I would have been able to carry more speed onto the straight. So let's go back and watch that last section just again. So hard on the brakes. Remember to brake early enough before the bumps. And jump out, jump in. Try to do the chicane well and accelerate onto the straight. So from that corner, one thing which is important when picking up speed for the straight is to be smooth again. So when I get on the gas here, I don't, I'm not 100% on the gas, full throttle. No, I roll onto the throttle because I want the car to be balanced throughout. I don't want to lose any speed by sort of oversteer, understeer, anything weird going on. I pick up speed smoothly here and, and somewhere in this area I, I'm at full throttle. It's not right here. I roll it on, accelerate, and somewhere here I'm full throttle. There we go. So that's that's a lap around the track. You know what? I didn't think I was going to talk this long about just driving. So I'm going to save the setup discussion for next week. <laughs> so this video ended up being only about driving around this track. And then next week, we'll watch the same video and talk about the setup changes that I would consider for each section of the track. Like, oh, my car is pushing here. What would I do? or I'm having this issue here, what would I do? Or I think the car should be better in this area. It has a tendency to want to flip over. I have to be too careful. What would I change? So that's what I'll be doing next week. But now it's time to go. See you.